Hello, friends and neighbors. Welcome back. I am live. I'm here for you to answer your questions. Let's see how many questions we can get answered in an hour. Now, in the comments, you'll see several people like Coach Marsha who have a blue wrench beside their name. They are our YouTube moderators. They're also certified health coaches. They're primal certified. They're coaches inside of our private group. And so if they see any obvious newcomer questions, they're, you're just getting started with this, they're going to be answering you in the comments. So if you get an answer to your question from somebody with a blue wrench, they've been with me for a long time and they know how I'm going to answer the question. And so you can pretty much take their answer as my answer. Marsha is one of our great coaches inside the group. So now is the time. Try to keep your question as short as you possibly can while including all relevant information. Uh, and we will see how many people we can help during this hour, hour and a half. We'll see how long uh, I can go. I've, I've been working on the farm today for about six hours. Then I recorded a podcast, did some other work, and now I'm live with you guys here. Uh, Nancy's listening from Lincolnton, North Carolina, and she loves the carnivore diet. All you guys type in the comments right now. Are you carnivore? Are you ketovore? Are you keto? Are you keto-ish? Dirty ketovore or dirty keto, sort of keto, low carb? Any of those answers are totally fine with me. Uh, even if you're vegan, plant-based, put it in the comments. I want to know. Also, I want to make it very clear that I am not a vegan basher. I'm not a plant-based diet hater. Uh, I love it that you've decided on a diet because that's the first step into moving towards a proper human diet is actually starting to think about the food that you put in your face hole. That's the first step of reclaiming your health. Now, I feel like if you're, if you're, if you went vegan, you've made a mistake, but that's okay. We can, we can agree to disagree on that. And I'm happy to entertain any, any questions from, from people following a vegan diet or vegan lifestyle, sorry, or a plant-based diet. If you're like, how the hell is red meat healthy? Ask your question. I'm not, I'm not offended by that. I will not block you. Yeah. Let me see with these comments. Tell me what, what kind of diet are you following right now? I love it. I love it. Here's Mudbug from Laredo, Texas. Mudbug didn't tell me what kind of diet they're following right now. Let's see. I got a, oh gosh. Uh, a couple of uh, questions already. So we have a small farm and Linda knows that. She says, what do you feed your chickens? So right now I think we have 15 golden laced Wyandotte chickens, all hens, no roosters, and two turkeys just so they can gobble and maybe attract the wild turkeys. And uh, our, our hens are free range. They literally have 49 acres to walk around and eat on. Okay, when we say free range, we don't mean that we the doors crack so they can see outside. The only time they're in the, the chicken coop is at bedtime when they decide to go in the chicken coop. For the other, what, um, 20 hours of the day, 20, uh, 18 hours of the day, they're outside eating bugs, worms, grass seeds, grass, whatever, whatever. If they find a dead carcass, they'll eat the heck out of that. And so we, I do give them one small scoop of uh, chicken layer pellets. It's GMO. It costs a little extra, but it's hopefully a little less bad. But but I'd say 80% of their food is stuff that they self-select out on out in the pasture and in the woods. They have free range in the pasture, the yard, the woods. They can go wherever they want, eat whatever they want. They drink water from the, the creek, and they go to bed when they want to. They get up when they want to. They're truly free range. So that's what we fit our chickens. Josh, I can't stop losing weight. Carnivore for two years recently reduced protein because it elevated my A1C. Was eating around a, a thousand grams of filet, reduced it slowly to 580 grams plus 30 grams of beef tallow. Um, I am now five foot 10 and 158 pounds. I was 170. Now, several things going on here that we need to talk about, Josh. First of all, being five foot 10 and weighing 158 pounds is not too skinny. That's actually a very normal, healthy sized human. But in modern society, people are going to be looking at you like you've got cancer or something like, dude, what's wrong with you? 
because they're not used to seeing normal sized humans anymore. Okay. I guarantee you, if you could uh, get on the internet machine and look up the average weight of an army recruit back in 1910 or 1920, they'd weigh at five foot, 10 inches, they'd weigh less than 158. Okay. So now with that being said, first of all, stop beating yourself up because you're too skinny. You're not too skinny. You're actually, that's a beautiful, healthy weight for a human being. Uh, number two, if you want to get back to 170, there's two ways to do it. If you want to gain fat, add back carbohydrates into your diet and you'll start to put on fat. Keep eating plenty of fat, and, uh, meat and protein and add some carbs and you'll start to gain weight, but it'll be fat. If you want to gain muscle and bone, then you're going to start lifting heavy things, Josh. Okay. You're going to lift very heavy. You can do a three-day split. You can do every other day. You can do, there's all kinds of different regimens. You don't necessarily have to join the gym. I was out today lifting heavy things on the farm for six hours. I was lifting logs that I had used my chainsaw to cut so they were big enough that I could barely pick them up and then carry them over to the brush pile and throw them as hard as I could into the brush pile. Some of them I cut so long, I can't pick them up. <clears throat> I have to flip them. So I pick them up, walk them up, and then push them as hard as I can. And I would flip them five or six or seven times to get them to the brush pile. And then dragging brush. And I cut the brush big enough so that I can barely drag it. So you've seen the professional athletes either dragging the sled or pushing the sled. That's what I'm doing when I've got a huge branch in each hand dragging it over to the brush pile. That's building muscle, that's building bone, that's making my connective tissue stronger. All that stuff shows up on the scale. So lift heavy things if you want to gain muscle and bone weight. If you want to gain fat weight, add carbs into your diet. That's how you do it. Robbie, hey doc, thanks for all your content. What do you, what do my gut microbes feed on when I'm on carnivore? Yeah, collagen. They feed on meat. There, there are some, some bacteria love collagen, uh, love meat. They love the all the proteins found in egg whites and egg yolks. They don't need any carbohydrates. I don't know why experts in gut health say, oh, you've got to eat carbohydrates for your gut microbiome. Uh, after I'd been strict carnivore for three years, I sent off one of the gut microbiome testing kits. And it came back and they're like, hey, your gut microbiome looks great. You've got great biodiversity. You've got all the good bacteria. You've got none of the, you know, not many of the bad bacteria. But also here's some supplements we want to sell you. Yeah. So somehow eating zero carb, I'm able to have great gut microbiome diversity. Not sure since I don't eat any carbs how that's possible. And keep in mind, Robbie, uh, there is a small amount of carbohydrate in animal foods, right? Liver's got one or two grams per serving. Uh, each uh, An egg has one gram of carbohydrates. There's, there's a little bit of carbs, the glycogen and other carbs in meat and eggs and organs, uh, but not much. Carnivore is the lowest carb you can possibly eat, but there's, there's plenty of stuff in there for your, your gut back, bacteria to eat. Thank you, Tony Sean. Thank you very much, Deeds. Uh, Tony, wait, what happened? Twins, twins crap. Tubby's 54 and carnivore for a year, down 50 pounds. Huzzah. Uh, is up almost hourly in the night to pee. Hasn't had a good night's sleep in years. How do we fix this? You go see your doctor immediately. Many, many men who have benign prosthetic hypertrophy and enlarged prostate, and they have to get up several times a night. When they go keto, keto or carnivore, it goes away they don't have to do that anymore. But some few people that if they still have to get up multiple times a night, he needs to go to the doctor immediately and uh, get a, uh, a PSA checked and probably get a digital rectal exam and then uh, maybe go see the urologist because there's, there's definitely something going on. It could be bladder irritation. It could be prosthetic hypertrophy, it could be prostate cancer, it could be any number of things, but this needs to be checked out. This, this gets better or goes away for every man who starts a proper human diet. And the fact that it didn't tell me, tells me there's pathology in the background. Newbie, how do you feel about grass-fed cheese? I think it's great. Uh, is it okay or is there something about butter that makes it better than cheese? The thing that's better about butter than cheese is that butter has less 
uh, lactose. And yes, uh, butter, cheese has some lactose, butter has some lactose, but butter has the lowest amount of lactose. Uh, and then cheese has casein and whey. And in many cases, the way they make the cheese, actually, it has higher levels of the dairy proteins in them. And for some people, that's fine. But for other people, they're inflammatory. And, and for some people, they are uh, they raise insulin levels enough that it's hard for, for them to lose down to their ideal body weight while they're still eating cheese. Some people have to cut the cheese out completely. Um, people think that butter is pure dairy fat, but it's not. Uh, about 15% of the weight of butter is water, and about 5% is milk solids. Uh, there's still a little bit of casein, a little bit of whey, and a tiny bit of lactose in butter, but it's a tiny, tiny amount. So uh, whole milk is 4% milk fat. Most heavy creams, about 35% milk fat. Butter is about 80, 85% milk fat. So there's, there's, it's not a hundred percent fat. There's other things in it. And that's why for some very few people, they have to eat ghee because that tiny amount of lactose is giving them a problem if they're lactose intolerant, or if they, if they have inflammation from uh, the casein and whey and dairy, the dairy proteins. And there's also other proteins in there as well, not just casein and whey, but those are the two predominant ones. Then they have to eat ghee because that's clarified butter. It's got all the milk solids removed. Does that make sense? So many people can eat a moderate amount of, of real cheese on keto, ketovore, or even carnivore. But some people, because of the inflammatory nature of it, or for people who fatten very, very easily, like me, I have to. I can have cheese occasionally as as a snack, as a as a treat after a meal, or just a little bit on my meat. But if I I love cheese, I could eat two pounds of cheese a day, along with my two pounds of meat. Now, I, I eat two and a half pounds of meat a day, uh, plus or minus eggs, depending. Now, what if I I could absolutely overeat cheese? So what if, what if I added another pound of cheese on that meat? I could still eat all that. It's going to wind up being too much food for me. And I'm going to store some of that. And it's going to show up on the scale. Make sense? Get fit. Thank you very much, Dawn. Please tell my grandma-in-law to use her walker while healing from knee surgery. Her therapist tells her, but she doesn't listen. 75 years old. I'll have her watch the replay. Okay. Grandma-in-law. I'm assuming that you're you're that it's more comfortable and less painful for you to sit in the chair all day or stay in bed all day. You absolutely do not want to do that. You're 75 years old. It only takes a few days of you being immobile before you lose a significant amount of muscle. And when the muscle starts going, then also you start losing your bone strength as well. Okay, it only takes just a week or two of sitting around and laying around too much. You've lost a, way too much muscle and you've lost some bone mass, some bone density, some bone strength. You got to get up and walk multiple times a day. It's OK to use your walker right now. You're still healing. You're recovering. OK, you got to get up and walk. Stand up, sit down, stand up, sit down. Uh, I'm, if the doctor cleared you, which I'm sure the doctor did, you got to get up and walk around. If your surgeon said, get up and walk around, get up and walk around. Okay. It also protects you from, from blood clots. It protects you from pneumonia. There's a whole list of things after surgery, why you need to be up walking. And I know it hurts. I know it's uncomfortable. I know you hate that walker. You got to do it if you want to stay healthy and get healthier again. Marty Mack, five years in keto uh, to carnivore. We never met, but you changed my life, doc. Oh, Marty Mack, thank you so much. That literally means the world to me. You guys, this, this is exactly why I do what I do. Not for the super chat, but to know that there's somebody out there who just happened to see one of my YouTube videos, probably because somebody shared it on social media or shared it with them specifically. And then for that person to say, dude, five years ago, I heard this crazy redneck doc from Tennessee on YouTube, and it literally changed my life. That, that's why I do what I do. That's why I get up every morning. So this is what, when, you, when I say, hey, share this video, and you're like, ah, it doesn't do anything. Tell Marty Mack it doesn't do anything. 
She's living a different life now than she thought she would ever live again. And she likes it. So if you haven't hit the share button, please hit the share button and share this on your favorite social media because there's thousands of Marnie Max out there who just haven't heard about this yet. They don't know that there's an option. They don't know there's such a thing as a proper human diet. It's my job to put out the content and to tell you the truth and to help you understand it's your job to help me reach new people. It's free. You just click the share button and the thumbs up if you haven't already done that. Jack, recently noticed Veruca on right foot, possibly from swimming pool. Could be. Uh, could keto and fasting help? If so, what fast length and any other recommendations? Yeah, so you want to be at least down to keto, which is 20 total grams of carbs a day, max. And then I would, I would try to do 16, if not 18 hours of fasting every single day. So you're going to eat your two meals a day that are very low in carbohydrates in a six hour feasting window and then fast the other 18 hours of the day. And we've had hundreds and hundreds of people say, dude, I had a, this, this big ward or this patch of little wards. Uh, as soon as I went keto or carnivore within months, it was gone. We hear this all the time. Let us know. Let us know. Keep us up to date, Jack. I want to know how this does. Uh, tell me where you're watching from. What city, what state, what country? I love when you guys tell me that. I don't think Granny Berry is watching tonight, so you don't have to say hi to Granny Berry. But please tell me where you're watching from in the world right now. I'm, I keep looking for somebody from Antarctica because I don't think many people live down there and they may not be able to get YouTube. I'm not sure. Kelly's Maine. How long on carnivore should essential high blood pressure become controlled? Five months carnivore, A1C went, uh, is now six, down from nine. That's bizarre right there. That's wonderful. Weight went from two, 290 down to 225. So sweet. So nice. Uh, still on four maxed out blood pressure meds. Echo, renal, artery, Doppler, adrenal labs, normal. So you've been checked for or mostly for secondary hypertension. So this is probably essential hypertension. Um, the fact that your A1C is still six tells me that you're still hyperinsulinemic. You're still pre-diabetic. You've still got some metabolic healing to go. And so I would, I wish you'd tell me what your average blood pressure is now. Uh, but I would predict as you continue to recheck your labs every three months and that A1C gets down closer to 5.6, you're going to notice the blood pressure coming down. And you may be one of those very rare people who still has to take one or two blood pressure meds to keep their blood pressure controlled. Also keep in mind, 120 over 80 is not the goal. That's what the American Heart Association says. Uh, there's literally, so the old recommendation was keep your blood pressure under 145 on top, under 85 on the bottom. There's research to support that. If you get up above that, your risk of heart attack and stroke goes up. That's documentable in the research. There's no research to support the 120 over 80. They just freaking made it up. A lot of people who are conspiratorially minded think that they did it just to help their big pharma buddies sell more blood pressure pills. I don't know about that, but I do know that there's no research to support, especially somebody over the age of 60, 70, 80. I don't want their blood pressure to be 122 or under 120. Uh, no, your risk of falling, your risk of getting dizzy, your risk of breaking a hip. No, 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 no. You want your blood pressure under 145 on top, under 85 on the bottom. That's normal. And that's what the research shows very clearly. Okay. So with that, you may say, well, dude, I can stop one or two right now then because I'm under that every day. And then as you get the A1C down in it and make sure they check your fasting insulin next time, because I need to know what that is as well. But you've lost 65 pounds dude that is that's wonderful a1c you're almost you're you you reversed your type two you're on now just pre-diabetic you're almost there that's amazing uh mr Locke, doing an extended water fast soon taking a keto chow electrolyte supplement each day too anything else i should do to avoid issues during the fast no, as long as your fast is five days or less, I, th I don't even think you need the help of a doctor unless you have some specific medical condition or you're on a handful of prescription medications, then you might need your doctor involved. Uh, but if you're going to fast longer than seven days, you probably need to let your doc check some labs. Uh, probably still not necessary, but just out of an abundance of caution. You might want to do that, but that's it. Water and electrolytes. 
the current record is uh, over 350 days continuous fasting. Uh, he took he took water, electrolytes, and some vitamins, and he fasted for over one solid year. Lost a bunch of weight. So, uh, but but if you're just doing three day, four day, five day water and electrolytes, that's all you need. And then when you break your fast, you're going to eat a proper human diet and eat until you're full. That's it. That's how simple it is. Lord Nikon, will going carnivore be dangerous if you're pre-diabetic because no carbs may drop your blood sugar levels too low? Well, what's making you pre-diabetic is that your blood sugar is too high. So by dropping the carbs, you're going to return your blood sugar just to normal. That's the whole goal here. That's what that's what carnivore does. Keto does it too. Ketovore does it too. Uh, now, if you're if you're taking several blood, uh, diabetic medications or injecting insulin, you'll have to quickly get off those, or you will have low blood sugar. Okay, but if you're not on any blood sugar medicine, you're just pre-diabetic. Then, uh, if you're not on any diabetic medications, your your blood sugar is not going to go too low. Okay, but it is going to go back to normal, and so is your A1C. And you're welcome in advance. Tired looking for named. I love that. Welcome back. Did my blood work after a two and a half day fast. LDL was 452. Surprised by trigs of 138. Yeah, when you do a longer fast, your trigs and blood sugar are going to be a little higher. Uh, insulin was 5.2. That's fine. A1C 5.4. That's fine. Strict carnivore for two years. HDL 74. Could you comment? Yeah, everything looks, this is exactly what I would expect after a two and a half day fast. There's no danger here. This is all healthy. Thank you, Logan. Thank you, Patty. Uh, I have type 2 diabetes still currently. Patty currently has type 2. She's about to fix that. She's going to reverse it. Still have elevated blood sugar numbers six weeks into carnivore, and that doesn't surprise me. Uh, 200s after six weeks of no, no carbs. Am I doing something wrong? Nope. Stay the course. Make sure your doctor checks a fasting insulin, Patty, because I have known many people with type 2 diabetic, diabetes, they actually had type 1. Their doctor just misdiagnosed them, okay? So if you haven't noticed your blood sugar coming down any at all, and you've been strict carnivore, uh, have your doctor check a fasting insulin. Or you can go to a website called ownyourlabs.com, and you can get a fasting insulin test for 10 bucks. And if it's, if it's zero or very, very low, then you're a type 1 diabetic. You need some insulin. But I, I suspect you're type two, and I suspect that you just got to stay the course and give your metabolism time to heal. And before long, you'll notice that everything's coming down. And I do want you to recheck your uh, A1C every three months on carnivore just for your benefit, mainly just so you can see how your A1C is coming down. And also, selfishly, I want you to check your A1C so that you can teach your doctor how powerful a carnivore diet is. Dave. <clears throat> Oh, gosh, Dave, that's a lot of labs. Uh, so what's your main thing here? I do I do uh, answer questions like this in our private group, but I'm trying to answer as many questions as I can for people, and that's a ton of ton of stuff there, Dave. Uh, let's see. I'm Your trigs are high. Uh, your HDL is very low. You need to eat more fatty red meat and start lifting heavy things, okay? Carnivore nine weeks, uh, lost a bunch of weight down from 246 to 212. Uh, you're still on your healing journey. You're not there yet. Okay. Yeah. Just keep eating the fatty red meat, start lifting heavy things, Dave. That'll raise up your HDL, lower your triglycerides. You didn't tell me what your A1C or fasting insulin was. Both of those are very important as well. Okay. I don't, I don't care what your cholesterol and LDL cholesterol are. Debbie, I was supposed to have a colonoscopy today, but had a reaction to the prep on carnivore would polyps heal. Also, I'm five months carnivore with no success, uh, only Christmas I ate crap out of discouragement. I have CKD. So are you having your doctor check your CKD labs every three months on carnivore? If not, how are you going to know if, if your kidney function improved if you're not checking your labs? That's how you're going to know. Now, I, su I suppose, Debbie, that you haven't lost much weight on the scale yet. Uh, that's, that'll come eventually. That should not be your number one goal. If you have chronic kidney disease, your number one goal needs to be improving your kidney function. That's way the hell more important than you losing weight. Okay. I also bet you money that you're pre-diabetic and you don't even know it. 
Has your doctor checked an A1C or a fasting insulin? If not, that needs to be checked and that needs to be fixed. That's way the hell more important than you losing weight. The weight loss is going to come once you've healed metabolically, once your kidney function is better, okay? Weight loss, it will happen. It is important, but it's not nearly as important as healing your kidney function and reversing chronic hyperinsulinemia. Those are the, those are the goals. <clears throat> Carnivore Prime, next step to fix long-term loose stools. Day 99, beef, salt, and water. 18-6 fast, quick coffee, reduced fat eight days ago, restarted electrolytes, no water an hour before or after meals. Is this a serious problem? If you think this is a serious problem, Carnivore Prime, you need to go see your doctor, okay? Have them send off your stool for culture uh, and oocytes. Have them check your stool electrolytes and, and see what's going on. Some people, uh, especially, I don't know if you've had your gallbladder out or not. Some people, when they have their gallbladder out, they're just going to have diarrhea. Not much you can do about that. Uh, but go see your doctor if you think this is a problem, obviously. Mr. Locke, any doctors in the Indianapolis, Indiana area you know that support carnivore? Or is it worth it to travel to one uh, occasionally? So the beautiful thing about carnivore is you have to see the doctor way less often. Okay. Now I've got a video on my YouTube channel called How to Find a Low-Carb Keto-Friendly Doctor Near You. And in the show notes, there's five or six websites you can put your zip code in and it'll tell you where the, the, the nearest keto friendly doctor is. And some of the websites are worldwide. So no matter where you live. Another great way is to go to a local compounding pharmacy who actually make medicine the old fashioned way and say, hey, who's a doctor in this area that's open minded and rational and doesn't mind having a discussion with a patient? And they'll say, oh, that's Dr. So-and-so. You'll love him because the pharmacists know. Now, don't try to go to CVS and try this. They're too damn busy trying to make their hourly wage, poor guys. Uh, but, a, but a compounding pharmacy that's locally owned, they will take the time to talk to you because they still actually care about customer care and customer service. Uh, the pharmacists at CVS and Walgreens and Walmart, they'd love to do that, but they're not allowed to do that much anymore. But that's a great way to find a doctor because I don't necessarily care if the doctor you find is carnivore aware or not. I care that your doctor is open minded and willing to look at research and willing to look at your personal results. That's what I care about. Does that make sense? I want you to train your doctor. That's that's one of the the last chapter in my book, Lies My Doctor Told Me, is written to doctors. OK, I, I don't hate doctors. I want to train doctors. I want to wake doctors up. I want doctors to realize, man, I've been just falling for it. I haven't even been paying attention. I haven't even been trying. I haven't even been thinking about my patients. I'm just like, oh, you got this. Here's a prescription. Oh, you got this. Here's a prescription. Trust me, guys, if you're not a doctor, if you're just a patient of a doctor, that's not fun. Your doctor's not having any fun. If you can reach your doctor and say, look, doc, I used to be diabetic. Now I'm not. I used to be 100 pounds heavier. Now I'm not. I used to have uncontrolled high blood pressure. Now I don't. Aren't you curious as to how I did that? I can teach you how I did it. And then you, it, it, I'm not trying to sell you a multi-level marketing thing. I'm not trying to sell you anything. I'm just telling you, you're giving your patients the wrong advice. If you don't regularly have patients who reverse their, their type 2 diabetes back to normal, you're giving your patients the wrong advice, the wrong dietary advice, the wrong lifestyle advice. If you don't routinely have female patients with PCOS who then go on to reverse all their PCS, PCOS symptoms and get knocked up, you're giving your patients the wrong advice. Any good doctor, any curious, moral, ethical doctor is going to go, what are you talking about? And that is when you hand them a copy of Lies My Doctor Told Me. Or uh, you can you can hand them a copy of the Proper Human Diet Guidebook. If you haven't got your free copy yet, there's a link down in the show notes that you can just click on it and I will email you a free copy and you can make as many photocopies of it as you want. You can give it to every doctor you know. I'm not going to charge you for it. It's free. I want you to train doctors because the more doctors we train in the ways of a proper human diet, the less we have to worry about finding a doctor who understands the power of a proper human diet because you trained your own just up the road. 
Logan, is there any difference between aged and unaged meat on the carnivore diet and its impact on health and energy? Great question. For the vast majority of people, Logan, it does not matter. Okay. Almost all beef that you buy at the supermarket has been hung in the, in the, in the meat locker and aged for about 10 to 14 days. For some very few people. Oh, let me use my, hang on. Let me, let me get my, um, Oh, where did I? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. See this? This is called a normal distribution curve. And this is one of the most important concepts that all you guys need to understand. With any question that you guys ask me, this is one of the filters I put it through. So aged meat. All right. So the average supermarket meat is aged 14 days. Some meat that you buy in restaurants, some steaks have been wet or dry aged for 40, 50, 60 days. Now, it tastes delicious. The more you age it, the better it tastes. But also the histamine content goes up. For the vast majority of people, it does not matter. Now, let me show you how we, we're going to use the normal distribution curve to figure this out. So these people over here, so the higher the curve is, the more people under the curve, right? So these people over here could eat 42 pounds of aged meat a day. Wouldn't bother them at all, okay? The majority of people, they could eat pounds of aged meat. Wouldn't bother them at all. Now, over here, there's less people, but these people, might, if they ate too much aged beef, they might have a little reaction. And then these people right here, very rare, you see 99% of people, it's not a problem at all, but for a few people, it's a problem. And so they have to ask their butcher for unaged meat, beef, fresh beef, or they eat sheep and goat because they're typically not aged. Now, for everything you ask me about, is dairy okay on carnivore? Well, for most people over here on this end of the curve, they could eat unlimited amounts of full fat, real dairy. Doesn't bother them at all. For these people, the majority, if they eat too much dairy, it's a problem. OK, for some people, much dairy at all is a problem. And then for some people, I'm right here on the dairy normal distribution curve. I freaking love dairy. I can overeat it easily. I'm addicted to it. I love it. But if I eat too much, I'll start to get fat and I'll start uh, my blood sugar will start to go up. So I'm over here. I just I got to leave. I got to leave the, the dairy alone. Does that make sense? So any question you ask me, I'm using this in my mind. This is one of multiple filters that I put your questions through so that I can give you the answer based on the normal distribution curve in human beings. Does that make sense? Isn't that fun? <laughs> Nisha just laughed at me. Yes, I'm a nerd. All right. McBeezy, weird muscle-like quivering feeling in calf and mild spasms-like feeling, no pain at all, one week now, can't sleep. Huh, muscle spasms without cramping. This could be an electrolyte issue. Uh, you may not be eating enough salt. Could be you're a little low on calcium. If it continues, I would definitely stop in and see your local doctor. Uh, but without pain, without swelling in the calf, it's it's there's no danger here. But I know it can get annoying after a while. But I'd try to bump up the electrolytes, bump up the salt, uh, use, uh, use my eggshell hack. I've got a YouTube video about how to use your eggshells. Don't waste that nutrition. It's good for you. Uh, and then if none of that fixes it, go see your doctor. Metabolic health. I like your, I like your handle. Thank you, Dr. Barry, for all your great work. Tennessee boy here as well. Would love to hear your thoughts on benefits of goat versus cow milk. Uh, also what we might be losing out in with pasture pasteurization. Yeah, it's a great question. So first of all, I think that of all the dairy options, raw dairy, if properly handled, from a reputable source is the least bad of all dairy. Okay. I do think that the milk you buy in the supermarket that has been pasteurized, I, that's a little bit of a problem. No, I don't think it's a huge problem, but the homogenization, when they break up the fat globules, I think that really changes the, the healthiness of the milk, the nutritional profile of the milk. Okay. Uh, I think raw milk is, is the least bad. Now, I don't think any adult needs to drink milk. Okay, I think, I think it's very clear uh, when you're looking at all mammals on the planet, none of them drink milk as adults. Only we're dumb enough to do that. This is one thing the, the vegetarians are right about. 
I actually agree with vegans on this. You shouldn't drink milk as an adult. Now, our babies, Bonnie, who's 16 months old, and Beckett, who's four and a half, they drink how many quarts of milk a week? Goat milk. Yeah, goat milk. Yeah. 10 quarts a week at least. Yeah, yeah. But it's goat milk because many people find that the casein in the whey in cow's milk is inflammatory. And they find that the the, the casein and whey, it's, it's little, they ha, it has a different pro, uh, protein profile. So there's many multiple proteins in milk. Casein and whey, those are the most predominant. So those are the ones you hear people talk about. There's actually 20 or 30 different proteins in milk. And goat milk has different a different protein profile. And many people find it much less inflammatory, much less insulogenic. E easier on the digestion. Absolutely. All that. Okay. Now the goat milk they drink is pasteurized because we don't have a goat farm, but I guarantee you, if we had a goat farm around here, they'd be drinking raw goat's milk. Yeah, absolutely. That's the, every mammal on the planet drinks raw milk ex as children, except for humans without exception. So Summer Hill, that's, oh, that's the brand. Summer Hill is the goat milk we buy. And in Meinberg, yeah, that's that's the one we can get here locally. But every time we go to Nashville, we get the stuff that's a little better. Eric, eggs give me a stomach ache if plain, but if mixed in recipes with beef, protein powder, lots of heavy cream, I'm okay. Should I stop eating them completely? Maybe, but what I would try first, Eric, is to just eat the egg yolks only. For, for some people, remember the normal distribution curve? Some people over on this end of the curve, the proteins in, in egg whites are inflammatory. Yeah, eggs are actually uh, on the list of most uh, allergenic foods, but it's usually the whites. And it's, and it's very often also supermarket eggs that are misfed, mistreated. Whereas our hens, I guarantee you, if you can't eat supermarket eggs, you could probably eat our eggs. For some people, they have to switch to duck eggs or quail eggs or goose eggs because the protein profile is going to be different and it, it may not be as in, and as inflammatory for you. But first step one would just be eat the yolks only. See if that doesn't fix the problem, Eric. Also, it's a perfect, when you eat just the yolks, it's one-to-one -one protein to fat ratio. Chris B, as a patient, what do you say to a doc heavily pushing Wigovi? Uh, or is maybe uh, maybe time for a new doc? Don't like what I've read in the studies and heard here. Yeah, no. So what you say to a doc who's trying to push Ozempic or Wegovy on you is, no. Why why would the doctor be pushing it on you? Now, if you're begging for it, I can see a doctor saying, well, if you understand the risks, the potential risks, then yeah, I'll prescribe it for you. But why is this doctor pushing it on you? You might need to, to, to go, what is the name of that website where you can look and see if doctors are, are getting uh, compensated by the drug companies? What is that? I forgot the name of that. You can look up your doctor and see if they're getting paid for speaking fees and all that kind of stuff. Sometimes the Wegovy drug rep is very attractive and very nice to the doctor. And now all of a sudden the doctor's on a mission to put everybody on Wegovy or Ozempic. Oh, Manjaro. Very popular right now. It's very faddish for doctors to try to push these meds. Just say no. Say, I'm, I'm eating a diet that's going to have the same effect without all the potential side effects and no copay, no prior, prior authorization. I don't have to stand in line at the pharmacy. I just go to the grocery, buy real food, take it home and eat it. And it's going to work just as good as we goofy. And it's going to work for the rest of my life. I'm not going to have to take some weird drug for the rest of my life. But I'm glad that you're resisting it because I'll tell you guys all right now, I, I predict that the Ozempic, Wegovy, Monjuro, this is not going to end well. I hope all you guys know from watching my videos that there is no long-term safety data on these drugs. Literally nobody in on planet Earth knows what happens if you take Wegovy for 20 years. It's unknown. They are doing a big trial right now on you if you're taking Wagovi. You are the guinea pig. 
They will see if you have a side effect or not. If you have one, you report it to your doctor. Hopefully your doctor will report it to the database. And that's how they find out. That's how they, t- that's how they took Vioxx off the market. There was no long-term safety d- data on Vioxx. You would think that they would have to do a 10-year trial or something, but think about it. That's, they're not going to do that. Then they'd have to have drug development for five years and then a 10-year long-term safety. But what if, the, what if the terrible side effect doesn't happen for 15 years? So there's only one way to do that trial, and that's just a, the FDA approves it. They put it on the market, and then we see what happens to everybody. If you think I'm joking, look it up. That's how it's done. People who are taking Monjuro, Wigovi, Ozempic, they are in the trial. They are the guinea pigs. We will see what the rate of thyroid cancer is, what the rate of gastroparesis is, what the rate of, of, of just literally screwing up your appetite center in your brain for the rest of your life. Nobody knows. There are, there are the, the receptors, GL, GLP-1 receptors in your kidneys, in your lungs. What, what, what happens to those receptors? Nobody knows. I'm just telling you guys, there's going to be a class action lawsuit like you ain't ever seen in the next five or 10 years when the data starts coming back and everybody starts reporting. So if you have a side effect from Ozempic or Wigovi or Manjuro, please report it to your doctor and ask your doctor to report it to the database. Otherwise, they'll never know. And they'll just keep giving it to people. That's how the real world world works, my friends. Kenny, great name, sir. Yes, I I agree. Watching from beautiful Bakersfield, California. I used to work with uh, an old doctor. He's retired now, Dr. Donald Blower. He was from Bakersfield, California. Is 80-20 ground beef uh, diet suitable for my mother's 13-year-old arthritic dog? And what about electrolyte drops in it? Yeah, so we give our our dogs 80-20 or 85-15. Dogs don't need as much fat as humans. And then I put a few of the daily mineral drops in there and uh, that's got electrolytes in it. And that's, this is pretty much the perfect formulation for humans and for dogs as well. Our, our uh, gastrointestinal systems are very closely related. That's why a lot of uh, gastroenterological physiology experiments are done on dogs because their gut works a lot like ours does. You would think, since the vegans think that we're supposed to eat only plants, that they would study, uh, you know, a cow stomach or a rabbit stomach. But that's in in medical research, we use dogs for gastroenterology because their gut's almost exactly like a human gut. Yeah, so 80-20, 85-15, that's perfect for a dog. About once a week, I'll give uh, each dog a can of sardines with the bone in and the skin on, they love those. And that way I know they're getting a multivitamin. I'll give them some, uh, we, we have, we buy it's beef liver that's been freeze dried and cubed, cut the cubes and we'll give them a few liver cubes. They like that every now and then I'll give them some cod liver, but yeah, that's all dogs need is meat. They never need any plants whatsoever. Lori, any tips for PMS week? My cravings and willpower are the worst during PMS. Nisha, I need you. Lori has a problem. Shark uh, Pre-shark week, her cravings and her willpower are not good. Her cravings are bad. Her willpower is bad. The week before. I don't have periods. Um, I know that Nisha has trouble when she tries to fast during that week before. Mm-mm. Yeah. Nisha says, who does have periods, says bump up your fat during that week. Uh, make sure you're eating to satiety. Don't portion control. Don't calorie restrict. Eat more fat. Um, and just realize that your hormones are wacky that week. You're not crazy. There's nothing wrong with you. It's normal. It's natural. Uh, many, many women notice, Lori, as they continue uh, on a proper human diet very strictly, either keto, ketovore, or carnivore, that their PMS week, it gets less and less severe. We hear this all the time. Any women in the comments, if you've noticed that, please put that in the comment. Help Lori out here because I know it can be rough. And poor Nisha, when we were first dating, dude, her 
her PMS week lowered. And that's not just me saying that. She'll say it. She'll tell you too. It's so much less severe now. It's just like, I can't even tell until, uh, what do we call him? Fred gets here. Aunt Flo. I hope that helps, Lori. Thomas, Doc, I'm not sure if you're familiar with CLL leukemia. I am. Uh, an FMP that I know was recently diagnosed with this. She's been told that it is incurable and restricting sugar and carbs will not help. So CLL is a blood, blood bone marrow cancer. It's not a solid tumor. So what the doctor means that restricting sugar and carbs won't help is that it's it's becoming very clear for most doctors who are paying attention at all that if you have breast cancer, colon cancer, prostate cancer, lung cancer, uh, bowel cancer, any solid tumor cancer, skin cancer, brain cancer, that if you you can starve the cancer, maybe not starve it to death, but you can slow down its rate of growth. It cannot thrive and metastasize without sugar. And so if, if you're diagnosed with cancer, carnivore, 100%, strict carnivore. Now, the blood and bone marrow cancers are not solid tumors. So they're, you're not going to starve this. This is, a, this is actually just a, a, a mispopulating of the, the cells. You've got way too many white blood cells. Okay? Your bone marrows went a little crazy. But uh, CLL is very slow. You, some, I've, I've had patients who've had CLL for 25 years, and they're still fine. It's not a, an aggressive, quickly terminal cancer. It's something you can live with for decades, but only if otherwise you're very metabolically healthy. So therefore, if you want to be metabolically healthy, that's going to help your body fight the CLL and keep it from progressing. Restrict the sugar and carbs. Yeah, because you know what? CLL progresses faster in people with prediabetes and type 2 diabetes. Yep. Did your doctor tell you that? Also, CLL progresses faster if you're hyperinsulinemic, Thomas. So, Thomas, tell your friend, the, the nurse practitioner, to get her fasting insulin and her A1C checked. If either one of those is even one-tenth of a point high, her CLL is going to progress faster. She needs to get them back down to normal. How does she do that? By restricting sugar and carbs. Mm-hmm. It's a little different from than from solid uh, tumor cells, but it still applies. Mike, 61 years old, day 45 of beef, butter, bacon, and eggs. Since starting carnivore, my blood pressure stays around 110 over 65. Yep. Been on amiodarone, amlodipine, and hydroxyzine for five years. Uh, my doc wants to, uh, yet yeah, she needs to change her meds. Because at some point, Mike, you're going to start getting lightheaded when you stand up. You've lowered your blood pressure by lowering your insulin. Uh, so you're going to have to start stopping some blood pressure medicine before long. Work with your doctor to do that. Uh, I'd say the first one you need to stop is amlodipine or hydroxyzine. Uh, the am amiodarone, you may be on for a heart issue as well. So, But I guarantee you could stop one of these right now and still have perfect blood pressure. But don't do that alone. Talk to your doctor. Dan, how does one go about getting a CAC scan ordered? Is it important to do as a precaution? Uh, my doctor is not cooperative. So, okay. So, first of all, a CAC scan is a coronary artery calcium scan. It's a quick little CAT scan that they can do at a diagnostic imaging center or hospital. And it tells you how much calcification you have in your heart arteries, your coronary arteries. Now, do I think you everybody needs a CAC scan? If you're committed to eating strict keto, ketovore, carnivore for the rest of your life, I don't think it's I don't think it serves any purpose. The only purpose it would serve is if you have a high CAC score right now, is to recheck it once a year so that your doctor could go, how how does your CAC score keep going down? I don't understand. I thought they were only supposed to go up, but yours is going down. And that could teach your doctor that there's more to diet than what they may currently believe. But if you're committed to a proper human diet, it's not going to serve you. Really. But if any of you guys are data geeks and you just want to know, I'm going to get mine checked here in the next few weeks. Uh, and I, I've got all my lab work checked. They, they drew 24 vials of blood. And I've got one test that is a very rare test that I haven't got the results back. And when all the results back, I'm going to post all my labs 
and all of Nisha's labs. She got 24 vials of blood as well. We're going to post all of our labs in our private group so that everybody can look at them and see that, yeah, we're, we're literally, we're not just talking the talk. We're walking the walk. And so that, that's one of the many things that we share with our private group. There's a lot of stuff we share with them that we don't share out on just social media. Uh, so if, you, if you'd like to see a little bit behind the scenes, join our private group. If you'd like to be in a group of thousands of people who have conditions just like you, who have questions just like you, join our group, join our community. Five bucks a month gets you in the door. And you've got access to thousands of people. You can post in there. Join right now and post and say, how many of you guys have got a CAC scan? Do you think I should do it or not? And boom, it's just like being in a Facebook group, except there's no Facebook and we don't sell your information like Facebook does. You know Facebook does that, right? They sell all your information multiple times. So it's, it's, the, it's the convenience and the fun of a Facebook group without the Facebook and without all your stuff winding up on the dark web. Yeah. So I'm going to get mine checked. I may or may not ever repeat it again. Uh, you don't have to check labs to be healthy. You just have to eat a proper human diet and live a proper human life. That's literally all it takes. Thank you, Crystal. Chon, how often is it safe to do extended fasting of 48 to 72 hours. I think it's completely 100% safe to do a, a two-day fast once a week or to do a three-day fast every other week. I don't even think you, you don't need to consult a doctor unless you're taking certain medications or have certain medical conditions. Okay, now if you're wanting to do a, a, a five, six, seven, ten-day fast, you might want to work with your doctor. Might. But a, a two-day or a three-day fast, it's, it's fine, perfectly fine. Do you understand how many times your ancestors tens, hundreds, thousands, tens of thousands of generations ago. Do you know how, how many of your ancestors did a two-day fast or a three-day fast multiple times during their life? Many of them, very often, okay? This is something that humans have been doing for a long, long time. Every major religion used to have fasting as a major component of the religion. Now, some of them have gotten a little lazy with that. But some religions are still very, very uh, strict about the fast. So every major religion would not have fasting if it were unhealthy because they'd lose too many members and they would lose the contributions. Fasting is perfectly safe and fine. I've got probably 100 videos on my YouTube channel about fasting. So to the ER... At Christmas with S, uh, supraventricular tachycardia, heart rate in the 170s for one and a half hours at admission. Labs drawn, TSH was 17, so you're hypothyroid. Had I depleted thyroids with fast rate? No, no, you, you probably have hypothyroidism. You just, your doctor missed it. Ketivore for 15 months, H&H &H and RBC also high. Uh, that could be from dehydration, yes. And also from eating lots of meat, your H&H &H will typically be a little bit in the upper range of normal, so your RBCs. Uh, but if, then if you're dehydrated, it becomes abnormally high until you rehydrate. Uh, but you need to have a full thyroid scan, a full thyroid battery of labs checked. Keep in mind that the average doctor does not check a full thyroid panel, okay? They'll check a TSH, uh, maybe a TSH and a free T4. And that's it. That's all they're going to check. If you want to know what a full thyroid panel is, I actually wrote a book about it, Common Sense Labs. It's all the labs you need to ask your doctor for, why you need to ask your doctor. And then if the doc says, well, your insurance won't pay for that, I even got the ICD-10 codes in here that'll get it paid for. There's a link in the show notes. But it sounds like you have hypothyroidism. So get the full thyroid panel. The Mimic, hey, hi, I'm nine days in on carnivore and I'm a little concerned that my blood pressure got high and it is, is it normal to lose 15 pounds in that time frame? Yeah, oh, 100%, depending on how overweight you are, uh, Mimic, and also how inflamed you are, how high your insulin is. I've seen people lose 25 pounds in 10 days on carnivore. It, now, 24 of those pounds are water, fluid, unhealthy fluid that you were holding inappropriately 
on your body. But yeah, that's perfectly normal. Now, why do you think your blood pressure is high? Did you buy a blood pressure cuff that checks on your upper arm that has the correct size cuff? Or do you just feel like it's high? If you feel like it's high, go to the pharmacy and buy a cuff. Make sure you get the right size cuff, okay? There's three different sizes. If you get too small of a cuff, it'll give you a falsely high blood pressure rating. Doesn't mean you have high blood pressure. It means you've got too small of a cuff, okay? And then if it's high, then go see your doctor. But I've got a video on my YouTube channel about how to check your blood pressure properly because most doctor's offices, guess what? They don't do it right. Yeah. Out of the out of the 2,900 of you guys watching, I guarantee you at least 100 of you guys are taking a blood pressure medication that you do not even need because your doctor doctor's office didn't check your blood pressure right and put you on a blood pressure pill saying that you had hypertension and they just did it wrong. You don't even really have hypertension. Mm -hmm. It's so common, so common. So if you're like, I don't know, did they check it wrong? I got to watch my video about how to check your blood pressure. And then next time you go to your doctor, watch them. And if they do something wrong, say to them, do you know that when you let my feet dangle, I, instead of touching the floor, it can raise my blood pressure five to 10 points falsely? Or say to them, you know, when you're checking my blood pressure and you're asking me questions and making me answer you, that can make my blood pressure go up five to 10 points falsely. Or, you know, when you check my blood pressure and you don't make me take my coat and shirt off, that can make my blood pressure three to five points higher falsely. Any of, are any of you guys going, hey, that, that, that's how they, yeah. They very often check your blood pressure incorrectly. And then you wind up with a falsely high blood pressure and you're on a blood pressure pill you don't even need. Yep, better watch that video. Angelo, Angelo, thoughts on the preponderance of evidence model of heart disease events and the AHA's legumes, fruits, veggies recommendation. That's a great question. I love it. So preponderance of the evidence is a concept that says, okay, well, we don't have studies that prove or disprove. That, 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 that you either need veggies and fruits or you don't need veggies and fruits. And, and Angelo's right. There's no research study that proves it either way. Now, here's the problem, Angelo. Back in the 1960s and 70s, when, when we were, the AHA was starting to recommend low fat, which by definition means high carb because you got to eat something, right? There's only three macro, macronutrients. Uh, start eating more whole grains, start eating more fruits and veggies. And stop the saturated fat, stop the bacon, stop the red meat, stop the cholesterol containing foods. They used to put in their recommendations, we currently have no evidence proving that this is correct, but we think this is the right way. They used to literally put that, that language in the, in the research articles or in their guidelines. We don't know. This is, this is our best guess. And then when the next generation of doctors come along, they stop putting that in. And now we're two or three generations of doctors in, and now doctors believe that the diet that the American Diabetes Association gives you, tells you to eat, they believe that that, that way of eating is backed up by research, that it has been proven that that is the healthiest way for diabetics to eat. That has never been proven. It has not even been proven that the American Diabetes Association recommended diet for diabetics is even safe for diabetics to eat. Yeah. So they're the ones making the claim. And used to, they didn't make a claim. They used to be honest and say, we don't know what's the best diet, but we think that you should eat low fat. Lots of whole grains, lots of vegetables and fruits. But we don't know. But now they just stop being honest. Now they're just saying, well, the preponderance of evidence shows. No, it doesn't show anything because show, when you use that word, that implies that, that you've been able to show cause or show prevention, and you have not. The only thing the research shows is that there is a possible small association between eating lots of legumes, fruits, veggies, and decreased risk of heart attack, a possible weak association. That's the only thing the research has ever shown. So 
if that is the preponderance of the evidence you're talking about, I don't give a damn. It, sh it shows a possible weak association. It's not, it literally, it's not a robust association. It's not a, 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 a an association so strong that you're like, dang, that's that's a strong association. And we know this by looking at the odds ratio or the hazard ratio of these studies. They're still, all the studies are observational. They're all epidemiology. All they can do is show a possible association. And these studies that you're talking about literally are barely better than flipping a coin. So, no, I, I don't care about the preponderance of that quality of evidence. Does that make sense? I hope so. Good question. I like that. And so, just because there is a consensus of all the experts, is that evidence? Because the consensus of all the, the, the preeminent experts in the past used to say that if you have an unruly 12-year-old boy, that you should have that boy lobotomized. That was standard of care at one point in our medical history. Yeah. You have a girl that won't sit still, lobotomize her. All the, all the experts would tell you. It was in all the medical journals. It's a big deal. If you go back a little further, it was, it, you would, it, it, the, all of the leading experts, the, the, the preponderance of the evidence was that you, if you have anything wrong with you, your doctor should bleed a pint of blood off you. Our first president was killed by his doctors doing that. Yeah, George Washington was killed by his doctors. They kept bleeding him because that was standard of care at that time. So do you think that those doctors, just because that was a long time ago, do you think they were idiots? Uh, lobotomies weren't that long ago. Look it up. Ask Chat GPT. When was lobotomy considered standard of care for mental health issues? You'll be like, oh, that wasn't that long ago, actually. Yeah. Were those doctors idiots? No. They're just as smart, if not smarter, than our doctors today. And so I don't care what the 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 eminence based medicine. I don't care what they say. I could care less. Either either have good research to that actually proves something, or that has a super high odds ratio, super high hazard ratio, 20, 30, 40. Then I'll go, mm, that's yeah, that's pretty strong. I may, I, you know, it doesn't prove anything, but that's pretty damn robust. But you ain't got none of that. The DASH diet that the American Heart Association recommends to everybody with high blood pressure, there's no research showing that it's safe for long-term human consumption. There's no proof that they're not doing harm when they recommend the DASH diet. They used to admit that. Now they don't admit it anymore. Now they act like, oh, no, this is standard of care. Do you know that there was a head-to-head -head study of a ketogenic diet versus the DASH diet, and the ketogenic diet kicked the DASH diet's ass? If any doctor out there tells any of you guys out there that the DASH diet is the best diet for lowering your blood pressure, I got a, I got a YouTube video. You can share it with your doctor. The keto diet lowered blood pressure way, way more, a lot more than the DASH diet. It's not magic, it's physiology. Ruben, how long on the carnivore diet can I heal my stomach inflammation? Been on the diet for six days. Also, do I need more fat as my stools are a little too hard? Yeah. So if, if you're having trouble with constipation on carnivore, then bump up your fat intake, maybe add a little magnesium supplement. But also keep in mind that carnivores just don't poop as much as people eating all the junk and all the waste and all the roughage and all the fiber. You're not going to poop as much and as often. And that's good. That's a good thing. That lets your bowel rest. Uh, but this, for me, I, I used to have severe reflux and gastritis. And within two months of carnivore, it was completely and totally well and gone. I would say two to three months. And then if you're still having trouble, go see your doctor. Mr. Locke. I also asked weeks ago, but too late Late to stream. Don't know if already answered, but will places accept my request to not cook steak and vegetable? So that's a good, good question. So if you go to a restaurant, like when I go to McDonald's in a bind, I don't do this every day, but if I'm running late and got, I'm hungry and I got to get somewhere, I'll go through the McDonald's drive-thru and I'll order six or seven of their quarter pound patties. 
not the bun, not the fries, not the Coke, just the patties of meat because it's 100% USDA ground beef. Although a lot of people on my, my short are like, that's not meat. There's human DNA in that. I was like, no, that was that was thoroughly debunked a long time ago. Uh, but yeah, it's so it's 100% USDA meat, ground beef, salt, and pepper. That's all that's in it. And they don't put anything on the grill to cook it with. It's cooked in its own fat. They just throw it on the griddle and cook it. In the vast majority of restaurants that grill steaks, they don't put any vegetable oil on the grill. It would cause a fire because there's a flame. Right, the the steak cooks in its own fat, but I, I absolutely tell them uh, that you don't want any vegetable oil use. I don't use any soybean on my food. Soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, margarine, plant butter. I don't want any of that. If you're going to use any oil, use beef tallow, bacon grease, or butter. My my friend Ben Azadi has a little card that he hands to the waitress or waiter in any restaurant that says he's allergic to vegetable seed oils. And he, he it lists all the different seed oils. And very often they're like, well, you can't eat anything in our restaurant then. And he'll be like, well, can't you just, I, I, I can put your olive oil on my steak. They're like, no, you can't eat our olive oil. We cut it with canola so, to save money because they don't want Ben to die with anaphylaxis in the restaurant. So they, they're forced to tell the truth, but just tell the waiter or waitress that you're allergic to vegetable oils. You cannot, if you, you'll have a terrible reaction. If you eat any soybean oil, canola oil, corn oil, peanut oil, that's the most common ones they're going to cook with sunflower and safflower. Say so I'll, I'll literally drop dead in your restaurant. If you, if there's any of that in my food, bet, bet you, they'll make sure there's none of that in your food because they do not want to do CPR on you. It's bad for business. Craig, I'm trying to gain weight, working out heavily and eating only steak and salt. I'm up to 157 from 147 in 15 days, eating four pounds a day. Fatty meat started tasting rancid. It makes me gag. Is this normal? Uh, you're, it sounds like you're eating too much, four pounds a day. I understand you're trying to gain, but I'm afraid you think that if I just force feed myself too much fatty meat that I it will force my body and you're only going to gain muscle and bone so fast you're not you can't unless you're shooting a little of the special juice that you get at the gym downtown you're not going to force your body to make muscle by eating eating more than your body needs okay lift hard get lots of rest eat until you're comfortably stuffed uh, I don't think Sean Baker eats four pounds of meat today and he's six foot six 250 pounds solid muscle so you're probably eating too much and that's your body saying dude why are you force feeding me when i'm not hungry that's not necessary it's not going to speed things up that special juice you can inject from the gym downtown will speed it up but it's also it's not healthy you don't want to do that common dog bad anxiety disorder Worried on blood pressure at cardiologist, it was 168 over 92, but at home the next day, still sort of anxious, it was 143 over 79. Carnivore for four months, down 20 pounds. Now, this is a great example, guys. Pay attention to common dog. At the cardiologist's office, his blood pressure, because he's nervous, he's anxious, he hates going to the doctor. He's got white coat syndrome. 168 over 92. Do you know how many doctors would have started him on a blood pressure pill right then? How many of you guys went one time to the doctor, blood pressure was high, there's your prescription. That's not how it's supposed to be done. And I think your cardiologist must have known better because you didn't get a blood pressure pill. Because at home, when he's in his environment, calm and relaxed, 143 over 79, which is perfectly normal. Yeah, he doesn't need a blood pressure pill, but he gets anxious when he goes to the doctor. It's normal for your blood pressure to go up when you're anxious or scared or worried or nervous or mad. It's supposed to go up. It's physiology. But it's not normal for a doctor to put you on a blood pressure pill just because your blood pressure was high one time in their office. That's wholly inappropriate, completely inappropriate. And if you happen to have a bad side effect from the medicine, it's malpractice. Yeah. Misty, Misty, yes, Misty. Husband is diabetic, 
He's currently diabetic. I bet you're going to fix that, though. High cholesterol, I don't care. Uh, has Crohn's, oh, oh, and no gallbladder. He's worried about going carnivore and taking ox, uh, bile salts for loose stool. Yeah, so he needs to buy some ox bile supplement right now since he's worried. He probably don't need it, but just go ahead and get some off Amazon. Because he's going to reverse his diabetes completely, Misty. He won't be diabetic in, in 6 to 12 months after he starts carnivore if he sticks to it. His Crohn's disease will be gone in six weeks to six months. He, he'll have no symptoms on strict carnivore. Yeah. Yeah. Now, his cholesterol may go up, it may go down, it may stay the same. Nobody knows, and I don't care. As long as his triglycerides go down and his HDL goes up, I could care less what his LDL cholesterol does. But he may need, he, he may need bile salts since he doesn't have a gallbladder, because that's not normal to not have a gallbladder. So he may need a little supplement, at least for the first month or two. And so when he runs out of the bottle of ox bile, tell him to just keep eating carnivore and, and just wait a week and see if the diarrhea, because most people after a bottle or two of the, the bile salts, they run out, they forgot to order any, and then they're like, wait, I'm, I'm still eating carnivore, but I don't have diarrhea anymore, even without a gallbladder. That's what happens for most people is after a few months, they don't need it anymore. But one thing I can guarantee is going to happen is he's going to reverse his type 2 diabetes within 6 to 12 months. It'll be gone if he's strict carnivore. And his Crohn's symptoms will be gone in 6 weeks to 6 months. So get ready for that. It's going to be fun. All right, guys, that is it. Nisha is clearing her throat. I think the babies are on their way home. I'm going to get out of here. Thank you so much for hanging out with me. If you haven't already done so, please hit the share button. We talked about some important stuff today, some stuff that if somebody heard it who's never heard it before, it could literally change their life and maybe even save it. Please share this to your favorite social media. If you want to join our group, there's a link in the show notes. If you want a free copy of my Proper Human Diet Guidebook emailed to you right now, there's a link in the show notes for that. Thank you very much, guys. Eat meat, work hard, be happy.